Get off my lawn. This isn't a lawn. So that was fucking dumb. So we've done gunshots and today we'll do the actual bullet wound. I'm gonna whiz through this because I'm quite busy with other projects at the moment. Next week's video will be a bit more in depth. Just note, if your shot has camera motion, track a stationary element nearby to the subject to parent effects to that should be static within the space. Today I'll be using the Action Essentials pack for my resources. So let's begin. Here's our plate. Jam on your blood splatter. Change the blending mode, fuck with the color. If you've shrunk the element, speed it up and fiddle with the opacity. Next, jam on a powder hit. Change the blending mode, colorize it, fuck with the color, and mess with the opacity. And lastly, jam on another powder hit, shrink it, speed it up, change the blending mode, fuck with the color, fiddle with the opacity, and just put the rest of the elements in the shot. Fundamentally, a bullet hit is not that different from a gunshot effect. Now that was short as shit, and I'm sorry. I'm quite busy at the moment, but in the long run that's probably a good thing. But if you want to go the next step, you can also try attempting to track your victim's clothing and animating a bullet wound, rotoscoping, masking, or keying, perhaps using a difference key, which we'll discuss next week, on your victim, put another round of powder hits on the layer behind to simulate an exit wound. If the ground is visible, you can also try perhaps duplicating your effects, flipping them on a vertical axis, corner pinning, fucking with the color, blending modes, and opacity, and using a blur to create a shadow. And one last thing, once again, sound is super important. The sound of blood and gore will really help sell the effect. Okay, we're done. Next week, something a bit more comprehensive. Bye.